Welcome to the Reluctant Sisters podcast. I'm Adrienne. I am the Reluctant Knitter, and I'm one third of the Reluctant Sisters podcast. Um, thanks so much for joining me. Thank you to um, any new viewers. Uh, if this is your first time checking um, us slash me out, thanks so much for joining me. And um, to all returning viewers, thanks so much for all of your support. Um, we're having a really terrible weather day. It is Wednesday. Um, sorry, that's my dog, um, Elizabeth. Um, it's Wednesday, March 21st. I kind of had this like all, yeah, I was right. Um, planned out and then it goes right out of your brain. But anyway, um, it's not so terrible yet, but, um, it will be. So anyway, I was taking this opportunity being stuck inside to do a podcast. It's been a little while. Um, I can't remember exactly how long and I'm also podcasting in a different spot in my house. So, um, I hope that the lighting is okay. It's kind of terrible. I have like my laptop up with the screen brightness up to try to, but anyways, um, I thought podcasting from the couch might be a little bit better. Lizzie, usually as soon as I start podcasting, you know, she's sleeping, she's like up and around and whatever, but if she's like sitting next to me, then maybe she'll, uh, stay sleeping. So anyway, let's get to it where you can find me. Um, we have a Ravelry group, the Reluctant Sisters podcast Ravelry group. Um, I'm not very um, active on it and there hasn't really been a ton of activity on it right now. So, um, but feel free to go check us out, join the group. Um, I am on Ravelry as Reluctant Knitter with no E in the knitter. I feel like there's like this big shadow, dark circle on my eye. Anyway, um... Reluctant Knitter with no E in the knitter and on Instagram as The Reluctant Knitter. So feel free to check me out on all the forums. Um, and yeah, so we can kind of get started. So I have some FOs, I have some whips, um, I have some procurements, so it should be pretty good. All right, so um, my first FO that I'm going to talk about is my Anders sweater. Um, it's a baby sweater. And this is the back front slash front. You can actually, I don't mean to uncover my mouth, but so the sweater is meant you can wear it either way. So if you have um, little ones that tend to put buttons or something in their mouth, you can put those on the back or you can put them on the front. Um, it's like my first ish, I guess, color work. I, I don't think I've done anything like, um, I think I did a color work scarf, but anyway, my first like pretty in-depth color work. I'm so happy with how this came out. So I did this out of Knit Picks. Um, I don't remember. It, I, I'll link everything down below, actually. I was doing podcasts. I was doing show notes on the um, Ravelry group, but I'm not sure how many people go check that out. So I'll put them down below, and you can make any comments if you want down below. But if you want me to put them um, in the actual podcast group, you can just let me know. Um, I actually have my laptop here, so there's no reason why I can't check out <laughs> how I did it um, so yeah the Anders it is by Soren Kerr I'm not really sure if I'm saying that right but anyway um, I knitted out of Knit Picks Andean Treasure it's 100% alpaca so it's nice and soft which I love um, and this is the Aurora Heather and this is the Finley the white is the Finley Heather it's more of like a creamy kind of and then the buttons are actually, I think, um, Katrinkles buttons. So let's get close on those. I think they're really cute. Um, so I'm really happy with how this turned out. It's really nice and soft. It's hand wash only, so I hope that's okay with the mom. But anyway, this baby is due in June. The baby shower is in May. So yeah, I can't wait to give that to her. I think she'll really like it. And I'm really proud of how it came out. So the next one that I did is the, or the, my next finished object is the um, Ivor cowl. Um, so this is matching for mom. So this is also by Soren Kerr. Um, so this is Knit Picks Wool of the Andes. It's actually a different weight, so I couldn't get the same exact yarn. This is the same color, the Andean um, I'm sorry, the Aurora Heather, um, but this was a little bit different because they didn't have the same color, so it's Dove. Um, so it is like a little bit different, but not like a huge, vast difference, so I'm pretty happy. Um, this I didn't love my color work as much. I did do my floats like a little too tight. I'm a tight knitter, so um, 
you can't really see them all. I mean, uh, she's not going to notice and I think she'll really love it. So I'm not, I'm trying not to be too hard on myself, but like, honestly, if it were up to me, I just would never even give it to her because it's just subpar. <laughs> But it's not. It's just, they're just a little tight. Some of the little knit stitches aren't showing up as much as I would like them to. Um, if you want to see my floats, there they are. It's knit in the round. So I did a color work sock actually, um, but I did it magic loop. And the color work came out like way, maybe I should just go like this. That's pretty good. The color work came out way, way, way too tight. So it didn't even fit like over my heel. So I ended up having to take it out. So Color work in the round was a lot easier for me than obviously color work, I guess it's not obvious, but then color work in Magic Loop. Um, but I still did it a little tight. So anyway, let's see if I can put this on without making my hair crazy. Um, but I really love it. I think it came out really good. Um, so it's knit from the bottom, so the top when you bind off is different than like the cast on the way that the cast on stitch looks. So it flared out like a, well, so I did a stretchy bind off. I think it was, is it Jenny's surprisingly stretchy or something surprisingly stretchy bind off, which I do for socks when I do them toe up. Sorry, my hair's like kind of crazy now. Oh, it's like really, okay. Um, but then it was like really, really wonky looking, like super, super wonky. So I actually took it out and rebound off just a regular bind off. Um, and then it was kind of floppy. So I was like, well, let me just, um, let me just block it first and see how it looks. And it blocked out good. So I'm happy with that. And this is also a twisted rib, one by one twisted rib, which I'm actually really loving right now. Um, so I think a lot of my ribbed things, I think I'm going to do a twisted rib because I really like the way that it looks. The knit stitch tends to look a little more defined. So, um, yeah. So that's that. Those are all of my FOs. Um, moving on to whips, work in progress. I'm still working on the Millington cardigan. This is by Emily Ringelman. It's in the Barocco volume number four, I think, uh, Barocco portfolio, which I won in, um, in a raffle, which I've talked about in other podcasts, but this sweater is knit in pieces. This is, I think this is like my second sweater ever that I've ever knit. And I'm actually knitting it for someone else. So I'm being quite ambitious with this. Um, but it's knit in pieces. So it's my first ever sweater in pieces. So this is the back. I finished the first part. This is, this is the first piece that I finished. So it's a double seed stitch and then cable patterning in the, in the center. And then the front panels. So I think my last podcast I had finished one and had just cast on the other one. So the panels are knit like this and then it actually folds over to make a pocket. So that's pretty cool. So I finished the two front panels and then I finished the sleeve. So the sleeve is just totally double seed stitch, no cabling. Um, so yeah, it's pretty cool. There's like a shoulder shape. I've never done this kind of like arm shaping. Um, so I have not yet cast on the second sleeve because I knew from the beginning, looking at the pattern and the size that I needed to make that I would run out of yarn. Um, the raffle prize came with the pattern book and six skeins of the Barocco. I'll show you the ball. Six skeins of the Barocco. So it's Barocco Ultra Wool. So it's 100% suit. <laughs> superwash, uh, superwash wool, and it's color number 33117, kohlrabi is what the color is. Um, so I knew, I think it came with six skeins or five skeins, I can't remember, but I knew looking at the pattern before I even started that I would need to get another skein, um, which is totally cool, but I just haven't done it yet. I should have done it like a million times already, but I haven't. So I have not yet, I, it is, um, it's not like hand dyed or anything, so I don't think it should, I don't think I'll need to like alternate skeins, but I wanted to get the last skein first and then just look at them to see. I didn't want to start the other sleeve without the last skein. So hopefully I can go do that tomorrow. Um, I got the yarn at, uh, yeah, I got the prize at Twist Yarn Shop. It's a local yarn shop in Niantic, Connecticut. I forgot to tell you, I'm coming to you from Connecticut. 
uh, the southern shoreline of Connecticut, and I live here with my husband, Sean, and my dog, Elizabeth, who's still sleeping, thankfully. Anyways, it's in Niantic, Connecticut, um, so I just want to call them and make sure that they have the color, or I may have to order it, or whatever. So that's that. So hopefully if they have it, I can pick it up tomorrow. My next whip is the Dunaway Scarf. This is by Julie Hoover. I think it is a, um, trying to think of what the name of it is. I can't think of it. So anyway, let me try to pull it up here. Um, I don't know why I'm like blanking. Brooklyn Tweed. I think it's like for Brooklyn Tweed. Um, so anyway, there's two, it's the Dunaway scarf designed by Julie Hoover. I think I just said it. When you purchase the pattern, you get two separate patterns in it. The first one is for fingering weight and the second one I think is for worsted. Um, so you'll get, there's two vastly different um, sizes that you can get. So in my last podcast, I showed, so for this same baby, I'm very good friends with the parents, so I'm very excited about this baby. Um, I'm knitting all of these things. So this is actually to go along with a pair of socks that I knit and a hat for the baby. I'm knitting this scarf for the dad. I actually didn't even realize. It's very funny, like when I'm looking at it in person um, versus when I look at it through the camera, it actually looks like it's striping, which it doesn't really look like that in person. So that's very funny. <laughs> so anyway, this is out of, um, this is fingering weight and I'm knitting this on the recommended needle size, which is US size five, 3.75 millimeter chow goo fixed circulars. I love chow goo, I really do. Um, so anyway, this is out of Lolo Did It. It's in her everyday sock, which is a 7525 superwash nylon um, in the Fly Eagles Fly colorway. So this was knit, dyed, sorry, this was dyed for the Super Bowl, um, that they were in, and the dad is a huge, huge Eagles fan. So hopefully he'll be able to recognize that it's Eagles colors, but my husband said it doesn't really like, you'd have to say it, and then they'll be like, oh, okay, so I'll have to write that down or in the card or something so he knows. Um, I really like this, and I'm really excited because it will go with the baby hat that I knit in those the socks are garters. There's like a garter stripe. So it's very cool. The front and then the back is actually looks like total garter. So there we go. So yeah, I'm pretty excited about this. Um, it uses a lot of yarn. It uses like 550 yards. So I actually did buy two skeins of this color when I bought it. So I have plenty to make a nice long. I like longs. I personally like long scarves. So it'll be good. Are you dreaming? She's dreaming. I don't know if you heard her. Um, here she is. She's probably going to turn around and then bark at something outside, I'm sure. I hope you don't see like her. Oh, there she goes. Okay, she turned around. Um, and then um, my, well, it's not my last whip, but the last whip I'm going to show you, but not the last whip I'm going to talk about. I cast on a newborn vertebrae. Um, this is by Kelly Van Niekirk. I don't know if that's even helping very much. Okay. Um, Kelly Van Niekirk, so it's the newborn vertebrae. So um, I think I cast this on on the 15th. <coughs> It's kind of hard with all of the babies are due kind of at the same time. There's two due in May, I think, two in May. Maybe it's just one in May and three in June. So I'm trying to like schedule it so that they're ready in time. And but then one of the baby showers is the beginning of May. So then I have to like get that done first, even though the baby's due in June. And then. Oh, sorry, I'm not sure if I'm even going to be invited to the baby shower for the baby that's due in May. I don't even know if she'll have a baby shower or if I'll be invited, which is, doesn't make any difference to me. So I'm kind of like trying to figure out. So anyway, this is taking longer than I thought that it would, but I haven't really worked on it because I wanted to work on something else for the baby shower that was due. But anyway, 
stop having babies, okay, people? There's so many babies. Literally everything that I've been working on, none of it's for me. So after all this is done, I'm definitely going to cast on my Rhinebeck sweater. And I want to cast on the Hoi Locatelli shawl. Now I can't remember what it's called, but I favorited it. It's like, it's like new. Um, so you guys probably already know what it is before I even have to say it. But I just put it in my favorites, I think. But anyway, I want to do that for myself. So, um, suburban wrap. So anyway, um, I don't even know why I went off on that tangent, but <sighs> newborn vertebrae. So I'm doing pretty good. I'm almost done actually with the body and then I have to do the sleeves and then I think that you do, I think you do a, a ribbed border on it. But, um, this is the back of it. It's a free pattern. This, this size is free and then any sizes above that are paid for patterns. But, um, it's kind of like a, it's frontless obviously cause it's a cardigan, but it's very, there's like very, very little, little, little on the front and in the pattern, um, which makes total sense. They said that, you know, if you have a baby that maybe spits up a lot or any baby spits up anyway, um, and you don't want to have to wash a sweater all the time. And I'm like, wow, that's really a good idea. So I'm knitting this also out of knit picks. I'm knitting this on my chow goo, which I love, like I said, um, size three, US size three, 3.25 millimeter. And this is Hawthorne fingering in the Andromeda speckle. And it's a, 80% superwash wool, 20% nylon. So yeah, and it's pretty good. I hate purling, but because it's a baby sweater, the purl section, you know, like the, the purl side goes by pretty fast. So it hasn't been bad and it's a good, nice little stockinette. So it's TV knitting. So that's cool. So I'm enjoying it. So my last whip, um, I'm not going to show because it's actually blocking right now. And I but I probably won't show it as a finished object. I, I probably won't podcast, I don't podcast very often, so I probably won't podcast when it's a finished object. But I did post a picture on, um, I've posted pictures on Instagram, and I will post a finished object picture on Instagram, and I think I might also just post like a little kind of video, live video on Instagram once it's actually done, because this, I have to mail um, my friend lives in Utah who's having a baby, so I have to mail it out to her. So anyway, I probably won't show it on a video, podcast video. But it is the Little Sisters dress. It's by Tora Froseth Designs. Um, and so go head over to my Instagram so you can check it out. But that's another work in progress that I'm working on. Well, practically finished. So, and that was cool because the neckline you do like a single crochet stitch around the neckline just to make it a little finished and I was like I don't even think it really needs it which it actually kind of doesn't need it but then I'm like well you know I already have like a small crochet hook to like pick up stitches if I've dropped them and I want to learn how to crochet anyway and it's just a single crochet so I'm like it's now or never it's just a teeny little neckline so I just YouTubed it and did a you know did a single crochet around the around the top and it does actually look very nice so I'm glad that I did that part um, so that is all of my whips. Um, moving on to procurements. I do have a couple. So the first one I'm going to show, I'm actually in a, um, yarn club. My husband bought me a yarn club for our anniversary last year. So, um, that's still going on because our anniversary, I think it was just a year that he bought me. So, and our anniversary was in May. So I've got a couple of more months. I can't really remember. I'm no, I'm not really up on things like, so I don't really pay attention. She emails you with the colors. There's two color choices. You pick which color you want and you pick which base you want it on. I think it's an every other month club. So I think the first month, like one month she'll email you and then you get the yarn the next month. So it's not like every month, but anyway, it's sheepy time knits and it's the special snowflakes yarn club. So this month's installment, I well, whatever month it was, I think it's on here, February 2018. So I've gotten this since I last podcasted. So this is the Lily. So I really like it. It's pretty bright. Um, I kind of wish that I had gotten it 
before I had done all these baby knits because I have a lot of girls do and I think this would be a really cute girl baby knit um, but I'm sure I'll use it for something else I got it in the sheepy feet base which is a fingering weight 75-25 um, wool nylon blend and I really like it I loved I've loved all the colors that I've gotten um, so far so um, so that's good and the nice thing is I do like that you do get to pick your color so there are two color choices there have been there's been like once or twice that maybe I didn't like love um, either choice but when it comes in the mail I really I really do actually end up liking it so that's pretty cool so my next procurement is some buttons so I went to Joanne fabric I have to get buttons for this little sister's dress there's two little buttons on the neckline um, so I picked out some cute little butterfly buttons um, so they're cute I think they'll look really cute I only need two so um, but I think they'll look good on the dress and they're fun you know with baby knits you can get like a little bit more um, you know creative like with the shapes and stuff because it's really cute might not you might not love it on like an adult sweater but I'm, I'm excited to look really good and then the last thing is something that I've been wanting so so bad so I finally splurged and I got it and it is a tape measure bracelet so I got it basically if I'm like knitting out somewhere, um, which I don't do a ton of, but then you'll have a tape measure with you. So it's actually by Felt Fusion. I found them on Etsy. Um, yeah, feltfusion.etsy.com. They also have a Facebook page. I don't know if you can see that. Whatever. I'll put it in my show notes. And it comes in a little bag with a little tin so I got a size 17 I can't can you see what that says I love handles wrist ruler I don't know um, and I got it in the medium color I think there were three color choices I seriously I love this color so much I'm really excited about this so there's inches and centimeters so it's six, 17 inches 43 centimeters and so obviously you know how to put a bracelet on but anyway it I think it just wraps around twice do, 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 do. okay um <laughs> so it just wraps around twice and it's really cool. It's a little bit rough. I'm sure the more that I wear it, the more it'll loosen up. But um, I love it. I'm so excited that I got it. So anyway, that's cool. That's what I got. So those are my three procurements. Um, yeah. And then just what I've been watching, I guess. I've been watching a lot of... Um, Hulu sorry we got rid of cable so we have a Hulu we have Hulu live but I actually haven't been watching a lot of Hulu live so I've been watching ER binge watching ER um, and then there's a new show called the looming towers which has gotten like good reviews I guess I I've tried it out I'm not sure I can't decide if I like it yeah the lay there's too much language for my taste in it and it's almost like unnecessary language like I feel like um, it's like they're trying too hard to be like tough so they're like using bad language and that it turns me off a little bit and then also I keep wanting to call him Jeff Bridges but it's not it's Jeff Daniels is one of the main characters and I cannot look at him seriously every time I look at him all I think of is dumb and dumber so that's kind of hard for me to take him in a serious role um, so anyway it's all about um, the events leading up to 9-11 the 9-11 attack so um, I don't know I let me know what you think of it but I haven't really loved it too much so far so I'm not sure if I'm even gonna continue watching it but as far as knitting I have been watching my standard knitting podcasts my tried and true that I've been watching for a while but what I was just watching this morning is the flame and fiber podcast with Barbara she's divas d-e-e-v-a-a-s I think on Instagram and on Ravelry 
Um, I was watching hers this morning. She just uploaded it. Um, she went to Chile, so that was really good. It's a really good episode. She talks all about like her um, hiking and all the things she saw. She put all, I mean, I follow her on Instagram, so I did see all of the pictures anyway. I'm not sure if she posted anything new. Um, but I'm just like so envious of her trip to Chile. Um, they had a great time. They saw so many really cool things. Like the pictures are so awesome. I wish I could, I think they were gone like a month or something. Like I wish I could take a month long trip to Chile. So cool. Um, so yeah, so that's what I was watching this morning. I mean, it's not new. It's not a new podcast and it's not even a new to me podcast, but I thought I'd share with you that that's what I was doing. Um, so yeah, as far as things that I've been doing, um, since I, last time I podcast, last time I podcast, I was actually planning my anniversary, my parents' anniversary party. It was a surprise. So I didn't say anything about it because I was afraid that my mom would watch the podcast and then find out. But so we had my parents, um, surprise anniversary party, which went really well. There was a little bit of a hiccup in the beginning. Um, my brother is in a wheelchair and so they he was coming with them and the wheelchair van um is old and so when they got there the doors to the van the back of the van where my brother gets out were stuck locked so they were actually stuck in the van for about an hour um which really kind of deflated me i was like it totally took the wind out of my sails but they ended up getting out they ended up being surprised my parents ended up staying my brother was very frustrated and rightfully so and stressed so he only came in for about five minutes because they were trying to make sure that the doors worked so that when he went home he wouldn't be stuck in the van at home um so he ended up leaving with my sister sarah um, but he came in for a minute, but my parents stayed, had a great time. Um, everything turned out really good. So that was fun. Um, but that's like the biggest, like fun thing that I've been doing <laughs> and I'm so glad it's over. It was so much work, but, um, that's really kind of the only event. I'm sorry. I keep playing with this. I don't know if you can hear it, but that's like the biggest eventful thing that I've been doing. Um, I haven't really been doing anything. I probably have. I probably did something super fun, but I can't remember now. Um, yeah, so I guess that's it. Um, thanks so much for watching. I hope that you liked it. I hope it wasn't super boring for you. Anyway, I'm getting off on a tangent now again. But anyway, um, thanks so much for joining me. And I'm not sure when I'll be able to podcast again. But um, I had fun and I hope you had fun too. And I guess I'll see you guys next time. Bye. Bye.